the game has massive problems with people when they get to level 80, right? Because they never move on from like the basic end game. And they, a lot of people probably think, is this it? Is this all the game is? Because there are a, there are actually an insane amount of people who play this game, right? If you look when, you know, all those um bonus weeks, right? When they do like the open world boss rush thing. Have you seen how insane the LFG is? Like how many people do this stuff? It is wild. The problem is that the players never go anywhere from there, right? That they just stay there forever. They, they don't realize that there's other things to do in the game. And when they look at it, they go, ban. I can't be bothered. It's too complicated. I'm not going to mess around with that. And I think that actually, funnily enough, really perpetuates the reputation that Guild Wars 2 has as a, you know, a casual dress-up game, right? With no actual gameplay in it. So, yeah, I've got to say it. Living Story Season 6, it's got to take a hit um, so they can fix the game so that the game can have a big future. And so... Gentlemen, I brought you here today to leech content, uh, because that's what I do. But more importantly, it is to discuss something I talked about a lot on a previous stream. A hot take, if you will. And I will just read what I tweeted, because it is a hot take. I'm going to read it out. And let's get a little bit of debate going here. A little bit of discussion. Huge take from yesterday's stream. All the broken stuff in Guild Wars 2, like the core game, new player experience, fractals being weird, bugs, living story, needs to be fixed, even if we end up getting less content after Ender Dragons for a while. Right, so in other words, this will be kind of replacing living story season 6 content with fixing the game, right? So repairing all the stuff that annoys us, all the weird gimmicky systems, Fixing that instead of adding new content. I think I would be in favor of this. In fact, I, I definitely would be in favor of this. I think it's the best for the long-term health of the game, right? And yeah, it's going to suck. And you may even kind of eat a bit of a hit. But with stuff like the Steam release coming up, you want that experience for a new player to be polished. You want it to be easy to comprehend and understand what's going on in the game, right? All the weird janky stuff that we know about, they don't know about. And I think that making that a very smooth thing for a massive surge of players. And look, a lot of people think that Steam can be huge, by the way. People actually say that Steam can be massive, right? And I think that they're not unjustified in saying that, to be honest. Okay, so my take is, is that in order to basically prepare for that, we're rolling out new features, alliances, all that kind of stuff. We're bringing that out and then BAM! We fix the game, release Steam, and away we go. Oh, and one more thing on my opening model that has set the scene. I actually think that it wouldn't even feel that bad to not get new content because we're actually getting a lot of new features, right? Living Story Season 1 would come back. They'd probably reduce it. I don't know, maybe they'd add strike missions to it or whatever. Who knows? You're going to have the expansion content drop anyway, so you get all the new maps, new content, new rewards, and stuff like that. You have um, alliances coming out there to kind of fuel things. You're going to have the balance patches coming out there with probably some skill reworks. So there's actually there's a lot of content that isn't necessarily new story and new living world there's a lot coming out in 22 and we know it's coming out too it's actually confirmed there's a lot of stuff coming out but what i'm saying is that it might actually be worth pumping the brakes and instead of adding a new um actual story and maps fixing what's in the game and making the game more polished there you go that's my opener gentlemen Take it away, because I believe there's a slight... In fact, you know what? We'll do it one by one, okay? Because you guys actually had kind of opposing takes on this on Twitter. We're doing debate format here. Nike, open it up. Why am I wrong? Um, you're wrong because most players won't see the value add of the, going back to, and adding season one stuff. And if they do... Uh, have to, if they do... If they ever did go back and, and do the season one stuff, they would essentially have to rebuild it from scratch because those you can't like replicate Karka's attacking lion's arch uh, again like you'd have to make like a totally new instance from scratch and that's just such a waste of content for or a waste of developer time um i'm not a, i think the main problem with season one like the content's not good I, I, like the actual gameplay is fucking trash and it's it's just as bad as the core game that you claim to hate so it's completely worthless to have uh to, to bring back season one from a gameplay perspective i do agree however with the criticism that the cutscene that you that's supposed to teach you about season one is garbo because you watch it and then you start season two 
And these people are like, hi, I'm your best friend. And you're like, who the fuck are you? Um, that's not good. That is not, that's very big dissonance and not very immersive. So the solution isn't to like make people replay more garbage content that, sh that is thankfully left in the past. The solution is to actually make a good cutscene. Like if that cutscene's a problem, make a better one. Put put resources into that. That that will take like a a very small amount of resources compared to like rebuilding the Karka attack on on Lion's Arch, or doing like the Flame and Frost rebuilding the Flame and Frost uh, dungeon instance, like which would be completely worthless considering how much they've done to that with fractals. Okay. So I, I just don't I just don't see that as being a huge priority. And we want to get players past that bad gameplay anyway. We want them to get to X Pack content. Like, frankly, season two gameplay is terrible. Replaying season two, Living Story, you could see Anit learning as it went along, but some of those episodes are dismal. Like, it was like, go to this place, press F on this drawing Scarlet had pinned to her wall, listen to NPCs talk for five minutes. And then you get like two blues and a green and it's like, come back for the next episode. It's like, whoa, that is garbage. Um, so we definitely want to speed people. We want we don't want people to get lost in the story. That's horrible. People that don't know what's going on in the story. That's really bad. But we also don't want people to be bogged down in D tier gameplay. So that's that's my thoughts on living one. I agree that fractals need to be revamped. I don't agree that you need to pause active development to do that. I'm pretty sure Cameron and, and, and uh, Ben A or whoever else is in charge of fractals, when, when and if they ever add a new fractal, that would be the right time to also revamp the systems and just do it as one big fractal launch, either with a Living Story episode or between Living Story episodes. So that that's fine. Um, and yeah, and I mean, once you tackle those two things, I don't really see the need. I don't. I don't know what else would necessitate any sort of delay of of active developing new content. Okay. Like, there's a couple janky systems, but I mean, you, those are all. Those don't. You don't need to like hit the emergency brake, step, bring the company to a complete halt, and uh, and 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 fix bugs in queensdale you can just roll those out as like along with other updates without stopping okay i kind of want to delve into some of those things there but i want snab to kind of get in here and state his take his position on the situation too and then we can kind of move into a more open discussion opening statement snab five minutes or less no i'm kidding okay uh, okay <laughs> well, okay well. <laughs> Yeah, so admittedly, I'm a bit distracted because one of my coworkers just slacked me and he was like, hey, like, mentioned something about a meeting earlier and just thanked me for something. And then it was like, hey, I saw you stream Guild Wars 2. Is that game still alive? I played tons of WoW as a kid, but never had any friends who played Guild Wars 2. Yo, your stream is sick. Dude, I'm just sick. dying. You've been recognized in real life, dude. Insane. Oh, my gosh. This anyway, is actually famous. Um, yeah, here's my take. I mean, I kind of agree with some of what Nike said. Um, like, I couldn't contain my thoughts into one tweet. But basically, <laughs> there there is some reason why you would want to invest in yourself, right? That was the point I was trying to get at. It's like, hey, if the game put maybe steps aside a bit and invests in these things, it'll pay dividends later. Like, there, there may be, like, a positive outcome. The problem is that that's very difficult to measure and to know. And so it's a bit of a risk, right? They could step aside and like you're suggesting, they could like halt all progress and just work on this other stuff. But then if it doesn't have the ROI, they've just wasted a ton of time, right? And then they're not bringing in new players with that potential. It depends on how they position and market it, I suppose. I think you want a balanced approach, right? I, I think that you can, you can do both. My, my, uh, basically, I agree, but I just think it shouldn't be as extreme as perhaps you were positioning it to be on Twitter. I would say, hey, I'm okay with less content if it means refining more older content. I do not think they should halt content in favor of just polishing because uh, that's gonna not work out. 
It's going to be not a positive so, thing. Okay, okay. In, in that case, l let's make it extreme. Just imagine that there's a choice. They can either polish the content or make new content, and they can't do both. Which one is? Which one would you pick? I would pick make new content. I'd pick make new content, and when they make it, polish it. <laughs> or, so or all make content going content, forward is polished. Make new content, and when the systems and the new content touch on old systems, then use that it. as the opportunity to fix it. But yeah, that's not what. That's not the dilemma that you put to us. But that's what. I yeah, think that's the smartest yeah, for sure. way to do it. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so in other words, kind of do it when it's when it's relevant. Yeah, uh, but, when you uh, make a new fractal, revamp fractals. So, if you ever uh, make a new raid, go back and you know do like a add CMs to old. You know what I mean, or or whatever polish you're gonna do. But it, it the the one thing about ROI, it's a good point. Everything has like every decision they make is a business decision. They're not you know they're not developing for the for their fun. Um, the one thing I would say from a business perspective is that like Guild Wars 2 isn't like a one or two year old game. It's it's almost a ten year old game. So there the future is now. <laughs> there is no long term. Mm -hmm. Like the game the how how like realistically from a business perspective, how long term would they have to be thinking about this game going to invest say six months of development time into old systems like that seems not a great uh roi just because in the long run does does the game have a, a long enough future to pay that that roi back i guess and it all that sort of depends on the steam release mm -hmm. uh, yeah whether or not you think that the steam release the new or, or some of these old systems matter so much that it will lift the steam release uh to a certain way yeah so uh, i this is the core contention right it's like how much do we value steam I, I think that's what this actually boils down to right is the reason you want to fix the systems in the game is if you're expecting a huge amount of new players right and that's steam right potentially um you know a lot of people think it's going to do really well we'll find out but this comes down to do we prioritize new players or do we prioritize people who are already in the game in my opinion uh, because i think we i think everyone here would agree that a lot of old content in the game that players will experience early on, even like the old maps, stuff like Queensdale, right? Um, the original story uh, structure, uh, dungeons, whatever. These things do not represent the current state of guilds. I think everyone would agree with that, right? Would we both agree? Would, would everyone here agree with that? That it's, oh, yeah. it's not very representative. I, yeah. I consider that a big problem, right? So if we're not going to go back and fix it, how? What's our solution? I'm not saying that there's not another solution, by the way, to, to be clear. But what do we do about this? Because I do think this is a problem that is going to cause players to drop off as they go like, dude, what the hell is this? Right? This is fucking Queensdale. This, this, this is lame. Right? Or they'll do a dungeon and it'll bug and they'll be like, what the fuck? What is that? Um, or whatever. And they'll encounter some kind of like weird jank um, in the system that's really unusual. Or they'll go, dude, what the hell is agony resistance? Right? Some kind of bizarre mechanic uh, that they've never heard of. Right? They'll living. They'll they'll play through to level eighty. Right? And, the Zaitan fight is a meme. They'll watch the Living Story season one cuts and go like, whoa, what the fuck? Is this game in early access or some shit, right? How do we address that? Well, the, the, the solution that we've, we've all agreed on in the past is that you launch a new starter area with EOD. Mm -hmm. And when you make a new character, you pick EOD and you start on New Byland and you get a New Byland with a new new player experience. And then it when you hit level 80 in the new player experience, you get like the branching option to stay with the EOD story or go back and play like the Tyria story or, or whatever. But obviously they did not choose to go to that direction. So that was the easy way of fixing it where you just create, you just go, the old system is horribly broken. It, it's too, too way too much effort to fix. So mm -hmm. we're just going to create a parallel new system that's streamlined, efficient and good. Um, they chose... Or, yeah. or maybe they thought it was beyond the scope of what the X Pack could do, but that was this solution, I think. I mean, I, I agree with that. I think that is what I was really hoping. And when they were talking about Xing as it's kind of like starter introductions, I was really hoping that would be the case. That obviously isn't the case now. Maybe we would see that in another expansion down the line, but it's not going to happen 
this time around, right? Um, and the problem is, is that there's no way it can now because the story is continuous. We already know that we're going to be seeing the same characters um, from the, the current story in Ender Dragons as well. Uh, maybe for oh, the next... No. Oh, no. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, they said yeah. that Bram's going to be there? Well, I'm not sure Bram, but like Marjorie and Kazma are there, 100%, right? We don't... Oh, and Gorik. Gorik as well, and Timey. Maybe, I mean, maybe Bram as well. Who knows? We don't know. But yeah, like the characters are going to be there. So they, they, in a way, I think that they have to do something about this unless they want to almost delay the Steam release until after the next X pack when they unfuck the story, right? Like, or that they un, un like they unmess up the the starter zone experience. And they they won't do that. They, obviously, Arena wants to release on Steam now. They want to get out there and and you know, and become big money. They want to get that big money. So I think they have to do something now. I think there has to be some level of a look at this new player experience and some of the old systems in the game. Um, and I think it is pretty expensive to do this. I mean, l we, we already know that Living World is basically all a ReadNet can do at any given time, right? Like this this is, I would say that is a fact. Sorry, Aina, I love you, but it's true. Because you can look at the fractal release schedules. Like, you know, you get like a fractal every two years, right? You get like a strike mission every year at this point, you know? Like, it's, it ain't looking so hot for the content, you know? Like, PvP essentially left to die uh, while Story was coming out, Living Story Season 4. World vs. World left to rot, right? While, uh, li you know, while Living Story is coming out. So I, I think that we need to be maybe, we need to be fairly realistic about the capacities of the company. I think that ArenaNet can't fix the game in any kind of meaningful way in a reasonable time scale like all at once unless we see a pretty significant reduction of content coming out from the studio as in like new content i think they would actually need to use a lot of their development effort to go back and fix these problems and address you know go and fix raids like make raids um replayable and openable right and have an easy mode on add challenge modes, right i think that's very non-trivial i think that will be a really big project for them they've got to do alliance they've got to do dx11 right at the same time and then fractals and i think it's to, to me, you want all of this at the same time, right? Because you were talking how, you know, you, you, you revisit it and rework it then. I don't think that's what Anet wants to do. I think Anet want to do like a massive, like, BAM! Like, drop Steam and the game is fixed, right? That is what they want to do. To me, that strategically seems to make sense. Uh, but what do you, what do you guys think about that? Sneb, give us the details. You know, I gotta admit, I'm like wicked distracted because I just found out that like my coworker is like the biggest gamer, man. Oh shit! Oh, nice. Is it well, Ray? Then I'll answer. Ray, uh, he, Ray he's just, Yeah, he, he's like, he's like, dude, like, I'm so gonna get back into Guild Wars too. Like, I saw. You. Anyway, I, I'm sorry. I'm super distracted. Just like re-ask me that question. I'm back Snab. in. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're a go look, listen, Snev. I hope you're ready to face the social consequences of ignoring me, buddy. Okay, uh, you know you, I, you will face social punishment now. But basically, I was just, uh, um, I was just saying that the uh, what I think Anet wants to do is have the game really, really fixed by the Steam release, and then release like almost like re-release the game to an extent with a completely fixed product with all of the things that we don't like about it gone. New player experience, like raids being weird, fractals mm. being weird, right? Strike missions being weird, all that kind of stuff addressed. Maybe even some of the old content in the game, like Living Story, you know, season one, right? Uh, or maybe even stuff like some of the starter zones, maybe, you know, maybe Queensdale isn't very exciting. Maybe they should make it more exciting, right? And they want to have all of that done and then hit Steam. Oh yeah, I mean... Uh, it, this is such a tricky balance, right? Because I think you say this all the time, right? You know, just rele releasing something is better than than perfection in some cases, right? Like mm -hmm. you could wait forever until it's perfect and then try to push something out. Or you could just recognize that it's never going to be perfect and, and just be okay with that. Like you, you kind of have to be. Otherwise, nothing ever gets done in life. So I uh, like it's it's weird for me because I really think that it's just kind of like a hopeless notion that you're going to be able to refine everything perfectly. I I think that, but the core of the argument really is they should just polish these things. They don't have to be perfect, mm -hmm. but I I think that if they don't go and do a little bit of polishing on some of these things, that these problems are just going to be exacerbated when they put them on Steam, right? They're just going to be highlighted even more, and they'll get, like, roasted in, in reviews and stuff, and they'll be like, I have no idea what anything means, and I hit the max level, and now I have no idea what's going on. You're going to, like, see all of these weird comments like that. I, I think it would be better 
if they they just did some some small fixes. They don't have to like tear down the whole game and remake it or anything, but for the starter zones, for example, like I don't know, it would there's got to be more of a tutorial. I, they did add those like little achievements. There's just got to be something more that encourages players to to learn a little bit more about the game. You can't force people to learn, obviously, but I think a lot of people's discontent with the game is their inability to understand it, right? Uh, and the people that really do enjoy the game, um, uh, like they either understand it or they're really okay with not understanding it. That they just like they don't engage in any like high end content, and that's totally fine. But if you're going to put it on something like Steam, your audience isn't just that those people anymore. You are going to get very mixed demographics. So if you're going, if, if like putting something out on Steam is like the perfect time to test out and see if you can appeal to these demographics that maybe you haven't pushed to in a while, like the hardcore people, like all of those people that bought New World and were super disappointed, right? Like, come on, there's, there's a lot of opportunity out there. I, I would, I would go for it, right? Polish some things up, make it, and then Make it so people know what they're supposed to do when they hit level 80. Show them the end game content. Highlight the combat system mm -hmm. that people, you know, rave about. Yeah, I, I want to get uh, Nike's response to kind of what I said about getting everything ready for the Steam release and potentially a second content for that. But I want to poke you on one thing there, actually, because I think this is a super important point. You said that people don't understand the game. Do you think the biggest problem there is that people don't understand it systemically or mechanically? Right. So, in other words, do people not both. know uh, what, what, what's the what? And do you think that one of those is more important than the others, or both equally as important? Because I think I oh, would, I, I would say, just I make would sure say I understand what you mean when you yeah, say sure. yeah. mechanically. So, when you say mechanically, you mean like dodging and and like those simple things. And when you say systemically, you mean like the notion of there being dungeons and fractals and mm. the currencies that go along with. Is that correct? Exactly correct. Yeah. So, like you know what what. How all the systems in the game work, right? World of Sword, PvP, open world. What is this dungeon? What's a strike mission? What's a fractal? What's a raid? How does it all work? What What is that, right? Yeah, that's what I mean. I, I, ooh, which is bigger? I, I mean, you're, you're forcing me to give an answer here. Which is bigger? I think systems is actually worse. Yeah, I agree. I, 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 I mean, obviously, I, I think there's elements where they're both bad, but I think systems is worse because they're so convoluted. Mm-hmm. I think once you, like, I, I think it, I try to put myself in the shoes of a solo player often. And I, I, it's really hard to do when you have a bias, like you've played the game for so long, right? But I, I think about it and I go, okay, if I'm a brand new player here and I start leveling and I'm playing kind of on my own or with a small group of friends, I'm going to go into a dungeon because the game has introduced me to that. Suddenly I'm slowly like, being introduced to the reward system of dungeons. Okay, each dungeon has their own token. Okay, I can trade in these tokens. Now I hit level 80, and I realize they didn't make any more dungeons. And now I must go to, oh, I get a notification about fractals? Okay. So I go into fractals, and it has a whole new currency system and whole different rewards, and now there's agony resistance. So I guess I start going along that train, right? Now I'm learning that, and then... Then strike missions are introduced, and there's a rotating system, a weekly system with three different colors. <laughs> you see where I'm going with this? It's mm -hmm. like people can't catch up to the systems. They're too well, luckily, complicated. Luckily, strike for missions people. are going to be, or strike rewards are going to be changed. Yes, so I'm very good. happy about that. That is the right move because it is too complicated in its current form. I mean, I don't even understand it fully. Oh, like... I don't either. It's. <laughs> I know I know that there's like a daily and that you can only do the daily three times a week and then there's a chest and you have to do each of these five strike missions. <laughs> like it's just to explain that to a new player. I don't know if you've seen that yes. meme where it's like the guy with like the, the frizzled hair and he's like pointing at a board and there's all these like dots connecting. I feel like that guy every time I'm trying to explain how strike missions work. <laughs> <laughs> it's just very confusing. And so the systems are suffering from sort I guess system debt, <laughs> right? They've mm -hmm. just made so many systems that it, it's really difficult to follow. The wallet is really 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 complicated now. Each map has their own currency and stuff. And and 
I, I'm not sure that I have a very good idea of how to fix that, so to speak, because, well, I don't know. Like, you've got, uh, you've got reasons to do that, you know? Otherwise, people wouldn't go to those maps. They would just farm the most efficient map for the currency. But the problem is that people kind of already do that anyway, right? Like, with the Eternal Ice Shards for Season 4 currency, people already do that stuff. So if if they were worried about that, then not really sure what to say. I think it would I think it would benefit if they like maybe uh, this is not a very good suggestion or well thought out perhaps, but if if they were to like at some point stop it, you know, so they they make these maps and then at the end of a season after like a certain period of months they combine it into one currency or something. I yeah, don't know. Yeah, I think know. we suggested that where like. While the season's going on, they're separate currencies, so that like you can't just super hard farm the first map of the season and then not have to do any content for the rest of the season. But then at the end of the season, it turns into one amalgamated currency. Yeah, hard. So agree. that it's just simplified. I mm. think that is. I mean, because I, then it's easier to catch up, right? Because yeah. the, the issue is that it's very difficult to catch up now. I, the the return to achievements actually helped a lot with that, though. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, it is quite difficult. Like, if you're a new player, you're like, holy crap, if I want to get these achievements done and, like, get the Roller Beetle and get the Sky Scale, there's a lot of work that goes into that, right? There's a lot of time. Mm -hmm. So I I think it would benefit by from some kind of system that just says, okay, all Season 4 currency, you're now one after X amount of time. And all Season 3, you're now one after X amount of time. Or, I mean, could you make one grand currency? Like, I don't know. It's uh, difficult. Dude, I just got my coworker to pre-order EOD. Wait, no kappa. Wait, no referral what? link. No Feels referral bad, link, man. dude. No Snap. Shrek, kid. Oh, you're getting wrecked, <laughs> and, man. And last wrecked. night, someone, someone came into my stream and they're like, hey, can you tell me about this game? And oh. they told me they bought the game after I sold it to them. No referral. Like, oh. bad, I mean, you could just use my referral link and say it's yours. It wouldn't hurt. <laughs> Brutal, oh, man. Snab suffering the consequences of not being a social partner, dude. A social partner, a reading that partner. Unlucky. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's so, well, so that. I had an idea. Like, so actually, like revamping the content of the new player experience in Guild Wars Two not going to happen. Anyone who, if you think that they're actually going to de devote time and resources to doing that, that's a bit delusional. Not going to happen. So, and obviously, they don't want to develop a new parallel one with the EOD. So that's not going to happen either. The solution, I think, a lot of us have advocated is. I think the ulti the best solution, the advice that I would give to a new player is level traditionally, just going around exploring the world, doing hearts, et cetera, et cetera, until you get bored. And then when you get bored, use your level 80 boost and jump into like the expat content or whatever. What I think they should do, however, is if people don't use the level 80 boost and they want to explore and level traditionally, get them through it faster. <laughs> Give it like a thousand percent XP gain. So instead of killing a mob and getting a hundred XP, you kill a mob and you're getting a thousand XP, you know, and just make the leveling way quicker so that they still get to explore and they still get to experience the world. And, but they're not in that mind numbing content for, two, for they're, they're, they're through that mind numbing content 10 times faster. Mm -hmm. I, I do think like it should be like you, you Oh, you're brand new to the game. You have a level 80 boost, or however, if you choose not to use it, you can you gain you're going to gain XP t ten times faster. I think that that would get them through it. That way, they do a couple maps and they're like getting close to level 80. You know, like they don't need to and and they can and they'll and I think another problem with the new player experience is that like you do a story step and it's not clear that it's not super clear to the players because I've seen like all the new streamers that were coming in. They're like, wait, where's the next story step? And you don't realize that you only get the story every 10 levels. Yeah. Oh, like this is like, such a bad. This is also a So if you were gaining XP bad. like hella yeah. fast, yeah, you'd faster yeah. almost than you could do the story, then it, then it yeah. would be seamless. 
That was so, one of the worst things they ever did, was like making it so that the story was broken into chapters that you could only see once you yeah. have enough Oh, so bad. Oh. Yeah, like maybe, maybe if the key farming is that big of a problem, just get rid of the fucking key, man, and stop the key farm. Like, I hate to say it, like... <laughs> Don't don't fuck the new player experience over to 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 cater to key farmers. Like who gives a shit about key farmers? Like they're not an audience that Anet should be like wow. hyper focused on Did compared they... compared to the new player experience. Like that's that's crazy. The key farmers thrown under the bus, man. Holy shit. Yeah. No, I, I think that's true though. I, I th that's a really good point. I think that's a really good idea to increase leveling speed overall. I, I think that would be really good actually, because I mean it's it's not slow, is it? But it's also not insanely fast, considering how big the game is. Right, the game is really big, so making it go a lot faster, I think, would be really good. Again, as you Yo, say, particularly because yeah. it would streamline the story there as well. Um, yeah. Should I leak my strategy for leveling? Dude, leak it. What's your strat? <laughs> I don't, I don't know if this is really that efficient, but I think it's kind of fun. <laughs> Okay, here we go. In, in like a weird kind of way. Yeah. So on my alt accounts, if I don't have tomes from logging in every day, I make the character go to the guild hall, <laughs> exit the guild hall, show up in Heart of... Th this is also assuming that I don't have any... Uh, what are they called? The tel the waypoints, right? Waypoint okay. of friends. If I don't have any waypoint of friends, I like exit. Now I'm in Auric Basin or something. Then um, like a friend will like tell... <laughs> Yeah, it's you know what's weird? Guild Wars 2 is actually really interesting when it's actually dangerous, right? Like those pocket raptors when you're level two, holy. <laughs> but anyway, anyway. <laughs> like one shot you, you're just dead. Anyway, you you find your way to Verdant Brink, and when it's the week of the bobble farm, oh my you God. go there and you you like put on all you put on well, you'd only be able to AFK if you were playing like Herald, right? So what you do instead is you just do it, right? Like you just jump around and kill the, kill the things with all the boosters on and you level super fast and you get gold for your first raid build. Wow. It's actually so genius. Plus, while you've done that, it, you got a bunch of waypoints like to get there. So now you can go and get hero points if you need to. How long does that take? It's, um, I haven't measured it out yet because I only just like, I, I was just trying to figure out waste level and I figured this out like four days ago and I've, uh, I've done it on one character now, and I was... Oh, the other thing, if you want to, like, recruit friends, is you make them, like, run dungeons. <laughs> and right when they get to the end, you enter, and then you get all the experience, and then you exit and go back to Bobble Farm. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's a lot... Yeah, there, there are ways, but... You know, let, let's be honest, you probably should just buy the boost at that point. It's getting real complicated. Yeah. I mean, if you have a new account, it comes with a boost anyway. But I guess you're making like an ult on that ult, I guess. Then it's different. Yeah, yeah. So like I have five alts that have like rate, like five alt accounts. And then I have two of those accounts that I'm trying to like. I have one that has like a Chrono and a Hollow Smith and, uh, and a Revenant now. And the other I'm trying to make it have like a Guardian and a Druid. Mm -hmm. And so that I can, if I'm like helping other people with raids, I'm not like a DPS Andy, you know, like I can only play DPS on my alt account. So yeah, I've been leveling up at stuff, but not enough tomes of knowledge to go around. Wow. Yeah, they're, they're, the, the one thing that I do want to circle around to is, you know, we, we were talking about how a lot of the systems can be very confusing to new players. This is kind of what I was getting at with my original position. I think that release you can only release on steam once right and first impressions are very important in my opinion if all this weird stuff isn't fixed by the time the steam releases out then i think that's a really big mistake that's a huge missed opportunity um to do that that's bad really bad i think that the game right now probably does have a lot of problems with retention only honestly you can see this okay um the game has massive problems with people when they get to level 80 right because they never move on from like the basic end game and they a lot of people probably think is this it is this all the game is because there are a there are actually an insane amount of people who play this game right if you look when you know those um bonus weeks right when they do like the open world boss rush thing have you seen how insane the lfg is like how many people do this stuff it is wild the problem is that the players never go anywhere from there right that they just stay there forever they, they don't realize that there's other things to do in the game and when they look at it, they go, ban. I can't be bothered. It's too complicated. I'm not going to mess around with that. And I think that actually, funnily enough, really perpetuates the reputation that Guild Wars 2 has as a, you know, a casual dress-up game, right, with no actual gameplay in it. So, yeah, I've got to say it. 
Living Story Season 6, it's got to take a hit um, so they can fix the game so that the game can have a big future. And, you know, one thing that you said a, a while ago, Nike, I actually think they have a long-term plan for Guild Wars 2. They wouldn't be adding Dark to X11 to the game if they didn't have a long-term plan. I think, okay, you know what? Look, I want to hear what, how you guys, how long you guys think the game's going to last. I think Guild Wars 2 is around for a minimum of five years. Minimum another five. Well, I was going to say probably about six more years. Yeah. And that's pretty long-term, right? Yeah. I just, I mean, it all depends on what systems you think are worth pausing Living Story Season 6 to do. I don't think a fractal re... Like, if they had to pause Living Story season, Living Story 6 for a month to fix fractals, that's not worth it. What? Uh, it especially if they could just roll out fractal changes slower. Okay. What if they're just YOLO? <laughs> what, what if they're just like, all right, we're just... Like, what if... What if they're having this like really in-depth discussion and somebody like bursts through the doors and they're like, no more discussion. We're just going to do some things and see what happens. And they just like delete the agony resistance and like do a bunch of these like little changes that would uh, perhaps have like big impacts on the community. I, I, like, I, I, th I think they probably spend a lot of time analyzing like what will happen if, right? Because they don't, they don't just like change something's drop rate, right? They have to have like, probably like 10 meetings about that mm. before it happens. Do you think that like the process of just slowing it down to the point where nothing really ends up happening? Um, or like the, or rather not nothing, but like the cadence is slower because it's harder to do things because the community will be so vitriolic about the change. Should we just accept? The community is necessarily the, the, the stumbling block for them. I, I think, I think arena maybe is, I think, I think, you mentioned this earlier, Sam, and I do agree. I think that, you know, perfection is the enemy of good, right? Um, and yeah, like it, it's definitely going to happen that they probably do over polish. I think stuff like, I think stuff like season four was overproduced in the extreme, right? The amount of effort that went into like a single story instance there was pretty insane. And yeah, changing things probably is a slow process because yeah, the game is huge. Changing one thing might be really weird. They have to QA test everything to see if it's going to break the game in some way. And it's also going to completely mess everything up, right? Potentially, or like mess with the economy or change the way people play something. Or maybe it's going to nerf something so badly no one's going to play anymore, for sure. Um, so then there is definitely a slow approval process, I imagine, like to make sure that nothing goes horribly wrong. But I, wh what, okay. Why would it be so bad if Anet didn't release Living Story content after EOD for six months? Living Story content? When yeah. you say Living Story content, what do you mean? Do you mean just the story, or do you mean like another strike mission, or any content whatsoever? Like, well, what any, gonna, any, in, in new theory, content. there's going to be there's going there's going to be a new strike per Living Story episode with a CM. Yeah, because be I was going to put the living the living story on the altar of death and sacrifice it for the good of the game, but if we're talking strike missions and other content, I I I just don't think it's a good idea. Like you you can't have a. You I don't know that do they that. that there's that I don't know that the scope of what they have to fix. I don't what think they a have to fix is that big. Yeah, I don't think I, a I think warrants like a earlier, total pause. I think I think a it's it's a small surgical small surgical fixes rather than like let's totally revamp the new player experience completely from the ground up or let's rebuild all of season one from the ground up and add a return achievement with a new legendary trinket like i don't think you have to do that okay uh, i i, I but think the let's... changes the okay. changes could be done relatively easily so let's suppose they want to do they they want to release Steam like halfway through 2022, right? What if they want to fix fractals and raids and uh you know they want to rework all the strike missions? They want to add season one back into the game and then readjust some stuff for the living you know the uh, living well sorry the new player experience. Do you think all of that is realistic? Uh, within say six months after the expat comes out because let's be honest here they haven't got anything prepared they have nothing prepared after the expansion it doesn't take a rocket no. scientist to work that out like it's obviously you know balls to the walls right now they already had to delay the expat right so they obviously don't have anything so do you think it's then again do you think they can do that they can fix all of those things in six months or so 
and do like alliances, uh, DX11, stuff like that with active development? No. I don't think they that's can. Why, that's why they have to be more picky about what systems they do. And they can't just wait forever. Because all, all, like, it's, it's just entropy. All systems are always in decay unless they're being actively maintained, right? Like, so the, if, if, they sp if they take two years to get to the point where they're if, to, to, to where the point where they're happy to launch on Steam, some of the fixes they've done at the beginning of the process are already going to be starting to show their age, you know, like, or problems with them will start becoming evident. And, and yeah, they, they can't. I don't think they have the scope to do all of those things in six months. No. Well, that's, that's which is why I mean. they have to pick and choose. I guess my position would be I'd prefer them not to half ass them, half ass it. I want them to go full ass, both cheeks, and just fix it. Just do it. Like give every system in the game like a fresh, a fresh look. And, and, but every it, system in the game doesn't need a fresh look. Well, the one, everyone that needs it, right? Obviously, not all the ones that don't. But yeah. I mean, I think a lot do. I think we would agree that a lot of systems in the game have seen better days, for sure. Yeah, and they have a lot of death. Yeah, I, I don't think it's particularly complicated, though, to fix the ones that truly need it, like Nike alluded to earlier, right? I don't I don't think that it's actually as complicated as we're making it out to be. Okay, which, but like, what do you think? I, I think, it, it, like, what you're saying is, mm. let's stop all production so that we can fix that one section in the corner. Like, I don't know, it... It just yeah. seems a little, it's not a little what, silly it's, it's to not, like, press like with, the emergency. It's not, when people say season though. one, like so, season one, are they? Is it like are they really going to redo the Karka attack? Uh, I, was just, that. I was there for that. I was there for. I mean, I was there for that too. It was a laggy, horrible thing. Obviously, it wouldn't be <laughs> yeah. open world if if they did it. It would be like an instance. So it would be like essentially all of the effort of creating brand new content from scratch and it would have to be old lion's arch oh my god like the scope of that is just so unbelievable that there's just no way to do it the feasibly. only way i could see them doing that is if it somehow was tied in and relevant to whatever the new living story is but that would be so far-fetched given that we're going to cantha i just can't even <laughs> like well, it would be so weird right let, like the solution is they have the solution it's the cutscene. you just make a better cutscene that actually explains the story and actually introduces the characters correctly what is the what is the um oh sorry no, I, i'm i've forgotten language i don't know how to speak anymore uh but now i can don't worry i've remembered so what's the way to go here do they focus on kind of like the short term and keep releasing content out there or do they try and like fix some of the things with the game and like really capitalize on the steam release because to me this seems like are you thinking about like the far future of the game or are you thinking about now? Because I do think that if they don't fix this stuff, the Steam release won't be as good. So, okay, let, let's, let's ima okay, imagine this. Imagine that the Steam release will double the population of the game. Does that change your opinion? That it's not worth going back to fix some of this stuff and make sure that the, the experience is a bit more cohesive? Um, so, so, uh, and those, it, the, I mean, the steam is like a big the deal. It's like game. big. Like the steam it, it could, is massive. Yeah, it, it could be definitely a big deal. I also think EOD is going to double the population of the game at least for two weeks, and they have a chance to hold on to those players. Like that will be returning players, you know, which I think is even an easier sell because it's players that at one time liked the game enough to like play the previous expansions and, and, and whatever, like those are valuable, very valuable players too, because they don't need a new player experience. They, you know what I mean? Like the EOD is going to bring back a, like the active amount of players in the game. Like the, 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 the peak concurrent users is going to be very big. And if they just get another content drought and then you tell them, well, once this content drought is over, you get to have the Karka attack on Lion's Arch. <laughs> They're going to be like, are you serious? Like, why did I come back to this game? Like, all right, let me know when the next X-Pack comes out. See you in five years. Like, those players are gone. And yeah, you might also, then on the other hand, Steam could double the players, but it just seems like a, like, I would, if I was going to, I would rather have the relapsed players come back. Uh, oh. and be happy yeah yeah from I, think, a I, think, standpoint. I think this is yeah to me this is the the core contention i guess the way i see it is that arena net should target long-term growth 
And the way you do that is by unfucking the game. Like, yeah, sure, a lot of people are going to come back for EOD, but then they will go away again, um, you know, pretty quickly a lot of the time, right? And in a way, those players... In a way, it's all a case of, like, thinking long-term. Like, yeah, the expansion is going to be a, a nice little bump to kind of keep things going, keep people engaged. It'll bring a lot of new players as well, right? But I think if you if you... If you're not designing your game and you're kind of ignoring things that are preventing players from sticking, right? And that it, it's causing players to basically fall off from the game at the new end. I think you end up with a lot of really big problems. And look at Guild Wars right now. Like the, the, the player base is insanely top heavy, right? Um, it, it, in some respects, right? Because there's a lot of people who are really good at the game. And there's a lot of people who are very, very bad at the game. But, but people don't typically move up, right? And the reason they don't move up is because the systems are a bit scuffed, right? And you could say, yeah, you know, if people are going to want to get good, they're going to get good. You're absolutely right when you say that. But on the other hand, you can also make things easier for people, right? Like, you can make things less obfuscating for players. And I think that the game is really missing a trick here. Like, I think the game is weird. I think the end game isn't very well explained uh, or, you know, or in any way curated, right? It, it is very fucking weird, the way the game tends to present itself to you. Um, and I think if they don't address this, then it's a problem. And, uh, and again, I think we, we've now agreed that, yeah, it will be a shit ton of work to do this. Um, and that's why I would say that it would actually justify in some ways releasing less content uh, or having a slight drought after the expansion of new content. I'm not saying they, they release nothing. They'd still be releasing Alliances, DX11. Living Story Season 1 would probably be like kind of part of the drought, as it were, as they would like slowly release that. That kind of thing. So it's not like you have no content. You just wouldn't have any new content. And I do think they would revamp it, by the way. I think they would actually like they they bring it up the standards with like what the season is right now. So it would have like strike missions and stuff, maybe even CMs. Like could have like some Dragon Storm style stuff with like an instance boss, like the Scarlet fight, for example, could be an instance boss. Um, you know, the giant Karka could be a strike mission or an instance world boss like Dragon Storm. So it's not like there'll be like zero content coming out. It's just there wouldn't be any new content. In other words, the end of Dragon Story wouldn't be progressed um for a while or would be slower, right? It would take a longer time. To progress like that would basically be the um the the score what about that i, I mean I, I don't know personally i would be i would be i would be bummed if they said you're not getting any new development but you get to fight scarlet again like i would be like what the fuck is going on with this company <laughs> like honestly that would be a head scratcher for me I, I just wouldn't i would feel that that it's like okay uh you obviously do not give a shit about me as a player. Well, but, like but, 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 you care about some Steam guy who is gonna meme, is gonna like play the game for ten hours and leave a negative review, but you, you don't care about me is is what I would. Well, what if the gameplay was good, right? The Scarlet fight comes out; it's like a really good strike mission. I mean, I guess, but I, I don't know what the point. I mean, I guess if it was part of like the normal daily strike rotation or whatever, the people are gonna do. Like, I guess. Well, I mean, I mean, because I mean, I don't think you care about the story that much, right? So why does the story matter? Wouldn't it just be the actual quality of the content and the gameplay that would be relevant to a lot of veteran players, to be honest? Yeah, I, honestly, I think that's pie in the sky because they're not going to do that. We know they're not well, going to. Okay, uh, well, like, they're not. It's just not happening. Well, I mean, like, well, I mean, that would be palatable though. if. Okay, so let's imagine that Living Story Season One comes back and they actually bring it up to standard with, let's say, Season Four Ice Food Saga. With modern design, modern technology, right, and modern types of content, is that now acceptable from a you know from a content type standpoint? So you you know you're getting an extra you know when they release like an episode of season one or whatever, they bring out like a strike mission or it's like an instance world boss or something like that. Uh, but it's you know it's season one content, season one story, right? But it's with these new revamp systems. I think they they if they do that, they just have to compress season one, all of season one into one episode. It can't be like six episodes of releases. Like it can't be an entire expansion cycle spent on restoring season one. Yeah, let, let me just jump in here quick. So from what I understand, you're saying, oh, well, why don't you just uh, attract these players? You go back, you revamp it and make this stuff stronger content. Because if they just, let's be honest, if they just brought it back how it was, it would be really out of date and kind of awkward, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, they'd have to refresh it. The closest thing we have to that that's pretty recent is the marionette, no? Yes. Okay, well, so the marionette. We'll have to have that, that episode. Go? Well, I mean, it, it was How also... I mean, it, 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 honestly, people really liked it until they realized that, honestly, it, it's too hard for the reward. That's, like, the big thing about it for sure, right? 
That's the problem. So what's happened? It's it's completely abandoned. So it brought people back for a while, right? And then it's been completely abandoned. I, I think that exactly the same thing would happen if they did that with all of the other stuff. Well, I uh, unless they made like really no. grand changes, and we we can like suppose that they would do that. I but... think I think Marionette's a really bad example for that. Uh, for that, I, I don't disagree that people, you know, the veteran players probably wouldn't repeat it that much. Although maybe they would. I mean, if it ha if it has like big rewards, I think they would. But Marionette is a really bad example. The reason people don't play that again is not because it's old. They don't play that for the same reason they don't play Triple Trouble, right? It's because if it, it gave has you five liquid thing. gold. Plus yes. a bunch of sh other Everyone stuff. would do it People every day. Do it. People would do yeah. it every yeah. day if it gave you five look of gold. So actually, I, I, in, in some ways, Marionette's a really good example. I think the only issue with Marionette, I think it does kind of... I, I mean, it's a bit weird with the whole, like, one player can fuck you. That's just kind of not a very well-designed piece of content. They probably should have changed that, not gonna lie. Um, but... No, that's not the reason why. I, I think Marinette's a good example of people who would play, uh, of a piece of content that people would play again uh, from a gameplay standpoint and would actually be a very good addition to the game. Like, most people, for, you know, and the other thing about new content is that I would even go as far to say that most people who play the game, and in fact, most people who have ever played Guild Wars 2 probably never played Season 1. So I think in some ways, Season 1 actually would be new content to a lot of people. I think most people haven't played it. Like if we, in People in the chat right now probably have because they're all the, the sweaty degenerates from back in the day. Um, but I would say that if you did a poll of every single person who played Guild Wars 2, I think most people haven't done it. They, they'll have never seen that content. So in a way, good. it is new content. Ain't lucky them. Right? It's not and particularly good. if they refreshed it, right? Again, I, I, it's almost like replacing season six with season one, right? And you do the same type of development style and see what happens. I know that's, I know that's a very extreme example. I'm not going to lie. That, you, you're not wrong, Nike. It's very pie in the sky. I agree with you. But I'm just, I'm just trying to push here a little bit. Like, if, is that sort of thing more palatable? If you do have this, like, okay, episode of season one, it's coming out with a strike mission. Um, you know, it's going to have the story with it. Strike mission comes out. It's got a challenge mode. Boom. Right. Next episode. Boom. World boss. Boom. Let's go. Right. It's the ancient Karka. It's a world boss. It's back. Fuck yeah. Right. If they do that, then I, I, I what would be the problem with that? Right. Hey, Pot, I, I'm just, I'm not going to mince words anymore. To be completely honest, I have no desire to do that, right? Like, as somebody who's played the game from the beginning, I don't care if they bring back season one. It would only be for the, for the players who, like, missed out on it, right? And, and you know what? I didn't, I wasn't even playing for all of season one, so I don't really know what happened. Um, but I really don't feel like I'm missing out on that much, unless it's strictly for the story. And I agree with Nike that... If they really care about that, they can just add some more cutscenes, add some NPCs in Lion's Arch, like a storyteller Brian, and then you go to, you go to Brian, Wait, I, and Brian whoa. tells you all about the story. Whoa. Okay, right? th like, th there are two things there that I find really weird, and I, I have to call out actually. Like the way you're talking about this implies to me that you actually care about the story. I, because you're you're uh, no, you're, I'm, you're I'm saying from the perspective of somebody that cares about the story, that's what you'd have to do. No, 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 I could yes. I could be okay with that, but otherwise I, it it would just be be so bad. Like nobody wants to go back and do that. You have to keep looking forward in a game. You can't keep dwelling on the past. And I, I mean that's pretty much what this whole conversation is about. Should they dwell on the past a little bit and fix those things and go back? The answer is it's it, they need to a little bit, but they have to be so careful because, I mean we've already had this massive content drought, and now they're going to be like all right. We're gonna take another like four to six months and we're just gonna like fix a bunch of stuff. People are gonna be like, so what did you do the last year? You just made a EOD and while you were doing that, you didn't like polish anything else. You didn't think about like any of these reward systems. I don't know. It just feels a little strange. I I would want to be just moving forward. Like uh, 
I don't know. I, I actually be curious. I, I guess I'm really biased because I'm not really into the story. How many people are like really upset about season one? Are there people that are like just totally devastated that it doesn't exist? Or are they just kind of like, ah, oh, that was kind of annoying. Like what's the level of of anger, right? Like I think how, there's, a, how... There, there's a certain percentage of new players who are like, I lost, tr like they do the Zaitan fight or whatever. Somehow they, they stick with it enough for that. And then they, they get like, they don't know, they don't understand what's going on next because it skips to season two or even skips to HOT and they, they can't follow it. And I, a certain percentage of that, I assume quit uh, I, or, or get, or disconnect from the game. But well, I, I, you know what? I'm not mincing words either anymore. Then uh, I straight up think that new players are more important than us. Um, for the overall health of the game. And ultimately, that will benefit us, right? Like, if the well, game grows and does us. a lot better. When you say us, do you just mean, veteran like, players. you, me, and Nike? Veteran uh, players? Veteran players, yeah. Um, yeah I think up. returning players are more important. No, I, I don't. I, I think uh, that gro uh, the gro the gro there's yep. a, there's a, I think there's a lot more potential for... It's going to be growth. a lot more returning right. players than new players for EOD. I almost Ooh. guarantee it. I mean, yeah, a for, lot for more. For EOD, yes. For Steam, no. Right, for Steam, no. For EOD, for sure, right? And ultimately, I think that what's good for the game is probably going to end up being better for everyone all around. If the game grows, then the game modes that we like can grow. And that hopefully means that, you know, they can also expand when they have more players in them. And ultimately, I think that if you don't have... A, look, the new player... I think everyone here agrees on this as well. The new player experience is honestly a bit scuffed. Like, the story barely makes sense if you play through it. New player is weird. Like, um, the way the game introduces all of its systems is really weird. The systems themselves are really weird. I think that if you don't have a really cohesive, good experience for new players, particularly going into the end game, then I think that will be a permanent stumbling block. Um, a permanent stumbling block on the end game. And I think it's got to be done sooner. I think, I think if we say we're not going to do this now, all you're doing is like kicking the can down the road. Like it has to be done. I think it has to be done at some point. It may not have to be after EOD, but it probably has to be before Steam, honestly, to really get value out of that Steam release because otherwise it's just going to kind of fall flat on its face. And... I think that growth. I think there's. I think there is more potential to grow Guild Wars Two than there is to basically cater to the people who already play it, if that makes any sense. Because I do think that Guild Wars Two has a lot of potential to get a lot bigger uh, than it is right now. I think a lot of people would want to play the game. Um, it's just that I think a lot of people fall off and don't stick. I think players don't become veterans in Guild Wars Two. They they fall off immediately because the game is is confusing to them they yes. don't understand what's going on right and if that that's isn't so wait, 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 so, let me like clarify yeah. before because people are going to yeah. be like what the heck he like hates new players no 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 no. Yeah. What, I, what i'm saying <laughs> is that guild guild wars 2 spends a lot of time trying to attract new players a lot of time if you look at all of their marketing all their advertising they do very little by way of retention at least that's what it maybe maybe i'm not seeing it i don't know my perspective is that all of the things they have in place really benefit new player acquisition and do not benefit retention. So when EOD hits, the returning players are more important than the new players because they need to retain them because they're still going to do this whole new player acquisition thing that they've got going on or they have like this big system in place for that. But they don't have a lot for retention. Because like Teapot just said, a lot of people fall off. Now let's think about why, right? Influencers are heavily, well, heavily, that's the strong word. Influencers are incentivized to get new players and to get people to buy the game, but they're not incentivized to get players to spend gems. Oh. Is that is that correct, you two? I mean, oh. I'm not in the, the program, but like, uh, that's, so you're saying that's gem my referral observation. Link? You want gem referral link? Yes. Th yes, because that would, that would make, that would that would incentivize content creators to put things in the game to retain players. Because right now, if you look at YouTube content, a lot of it is focused towards... A, a lot of it is focused towards, like, new players or, like, getting new players into the game. Should you play Guild Wars 2 in 2022? Uh, right? the, reason, yes. the reason people make those, the reason ArenaNet partners make those videos is because they have some incentive to. I mean, it's obviously not the sole reason, but what if, what if there was some incentive to 
retain players, right? I think the content would be a lot different. If we look at communities where retention is more important, perhaps, or more of a focus, like, I, I, I believe, I strongly believe that OSRS is like that, right? Because they want to keep their monthly sub number up. So they need to retain people. So you see content like challenges, like way more often, like all those Iron Man mode videos, all of those are like big community things. Um, and uh, yeah, like they just support their content creators more. I don't think they necessarily have like a, a creator code in OSRS, but they, they have like awards and, and, and different things and partnerships of some kind. Anyways, uh, yeah, that, that's kind of the crux of, of what I meant, right? Is that the, the returning players are more important than the new players at the start of EOD simply because it's like their new players in a sense, right? Because if they don't retain them, then they're gone again anyway. You want, you want to try to get some traction off of the EOD event, bringing back old returning veteran players. You need that. Otherwise, they're just going to leave again. They're, yeah. Do you see what I'm, what I'm saying? Am I making sense here? I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I agree. I, yeah, I mean, but this, you're, this you're is kind of my point. This is kind of my point, though, right? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead, Nike. No. Uh, I think I do agree. In a sub-based game, the developers' incentives are to get people to keep paying the subs. In a game that makes a lot of money off of selling bag slots to new players and copper fed salvage matics to new players, the incentive is selling a copy of the game to new players and letting them then spend 50 bucks buying bag slots. Do you think they buy that right away? Or do you think they buy that? Like, I, I, mean, I guess, yeah, I do. I, I think they do buy bag slots. I'd be interested on the stats on that. Cause I just don't know. Right. So I'm not going to postulate but, that they do something that they don't, but I, I think it would be interesting to know because I think that if a player hits like a certain hour threshold, they're probably more inclined than they're like, oh, you know, I enjoy this game a lot. I'm going to buy like cosmetic items and bank slots and more build slots and those sorts of things. But if they never get there and they just fall, they'll just quit the game and won't buy anything, right? Yeah. So like, um, shouldn't there be some incentive to want people I, I, to yeah, stay yeah. playing yeah, the game? Yeah, I, I do. I think that, that people that stay... You, you, they want to keep. They want concurrent players. Period. Like for sure is. I mean, and they keep. They keep like doing like nearly. They do like bi-weekly gem stories, right? They obviously want people logging in every few weeks to see if there's something they want to buy. So I, I think there is. They they kind of have an incentive there, and to an extent, I don't don't content creators by their very existence want people to keep playing the game as well so, i mean I, I i know what you mean snub i think but I, I almost don't think i don't think there needs to be an incentive for that right because you're already as a creator in a way incentivized to have people play the game because you know you, you want them to watch you right <laughs> and if they don't play the game it's going to be less likely that they watch you and obviously um you know like i, I think creators drive retention like just on their own, like in and of itself, right? I think a lot of people watch uh, streams and that keeps them in the game. Like being part of a community keeps them in the game. Like, you know, I, I get, you know, being in a guild probably, right? makes you stay in the game a lot more. And so that's another thing to the list that they should rework and fix, by the way. Okay, the way the guild system works, that needs to get fixed, right? That is broken. It's not good, not very good at all. Uh, but yeah, no, I, 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 I think we've almost reached a point of agreement here. I think that these things need to be addressed and I think retention needs to be fixed because ultimately, yeah, returning players are great, but there's a lot of new players who kind of like never really make it to that level, right? Like the game, the game does an okay job of retaining players, but honestly, I think it could do a lot better, right? And I think it's probably one of the weaker areas of the game where players just kind of get stuck and lost in the woodwork, as it were, and they're gone. They don't exist. They leave the game. So there you go. I think we all agree I'm right. Fix the game. Uh, no, I, I don't think that season one is the breaking point. I think that's probably where we differ. Is I, oh. I don't think like I don't think that season one existing or not existing is this huge problem. Uh, that, yeah, I agree with you. Nike. That needs to be fixed. I don't think that that's the the uh, the anvil that people are breaking on. I, I think it's maybe a small thing that that could make a big difference for newer players, but I I just don't. I don't, I don't view it as so potent that they need to drop things or like work their schedule around it or integrate it somehow into season six. I just don't see that as being that important. Now, again, addressing my own bias, I'm not 
I, like I was never really enga that engaged with season one to begin with. I did a couple of the things. I what I was seeing in the chat earlier is people say that it's confusing, but I don't. I didn't see anybody be like I'm big mad about it. Right. I think if you wanted to mitigate their confusion, you would just do something simple like a better cut scene or like storyteller Brian or whatever I mean, it is. Isn't that to just help shit? People... Isn't that just shit? Well, but that's that's the consequence of them making content in that way way back when, right? They yeah. they chose to do that. They wanted to have like an expiry date on content, and then they moved away from that. That that's just what happened, you know. Just, and like I don't, I just rather not have anything that is shit in the game, you know. Well, the, I, well yeah, they, they a... don't do that anymore, right? They've moved past that, but that. It's it sucks that it is it is what it is. They can only try to like make up for that. In my opinion, they should only try to make up for that by by being like, hey, like this is what we did before, and so this was like a one time like big scale event that happened. Here's like a cutscene of it, and here's like the the context and everything, and you're gonna be moving into this next portion that is more static. Or I I don't know. They don't have to make it like super laid out like that, I guess. But uh, I just I just don't think it has like the the potency. I, I don't well, think it's, it's as important to people. I, as I think you that think. having a cohesive experience is important, right? I think when you start playing the game, well, no doubt, you want it to be cohesive. I, I mean, I would level the same thing at dungeons. I think we talked about this the other day, right? But if you don't play through dungeons on your first play through the story, the story barely makes sense. As in, like it, it's like you miss unbelievably important things if you don't do that. I think it will be there for yeah. worth to kind of give people a much better story driven. Because look, look, we, we can obviously I'm not super into the story uh, either way. It's all right, you know, it's fine. But a lot of people are like a lot of people. In fact, I would even say the majority of people play Final Fantasy for the story and nothing else. That's true. That's also true of retail. Wow, by the way, without a shadow of a doubt, most people play that game to experience the story, and that is it. That's as far as it goes for most people, and get some loot, and that's it. And I think, why would we expect people who play Guild Wars 2 to be any different, right? I think a lot of people do really get into the story. And if, I think it's it's super jarring. If you have this like ultra janky cutscene, you have no idea who the fuck these people are. I would say the level 80 fix is the awesome. Fix the cutscene then. Uh, Just fix it and make it better. Well, make it good. Dude, I'm sorry, man. If I, if I played a triple A video game and like the first chapter was pure exposition in a cutscene, I am done. No, this is an indie game. This is a beta. Well, early let, let me introduce Fuck you to that. Final Fantasy <laughs> online. Right. Well, yeah, but we don't want that, right? Right. We don't. I don't well, we don't want people to play that I, game. We want people to play Guild Wars too, right? Well, I don't know. I don't know if I want people to play Living Story Season One. Like that. It's, I, I mean, unless they're gonna, like you said, unless they're gonna invest half of a studio's annual output making it good so you're looking at a budget of i don't know they're gonna put 10 million dollars into living story season one like that that doesn't i don't know that, that's that's like risking the studio like literally betting putting the the stock of the company of arena net itself on the table and saying we are betting everything on living story season one Oh God, that's, uh, I don't think anyone has the balls oh, for that. They're not betting it all on season one though. It's about- Oh, they would be. Yeah, I mean, no, no, if, if, you, if be... you're redoing all those episodes and, and polishing them to a modern standard and, oh, uh, uh, that's, that's a lot. That's, well, that's a lot. You'd also be repairing a lot of the game. You know, you'd be adding alliances, DirectX 11. Um, you know, you'd still have Ender Dragons content coming out. You'd have stuff like, um, you know, the season one stuff memes, right? Like there's a lot going on there. In my opinion, you know, that you still have content coming out um, that will be released. You have balance patches, right? Other updates, stuff like this. You know, so maybe some fixes to dungeons, some fixes to open world, right? Fixes to the story, new player experience stuff, right? It's not like there'd be like nothing being released. Like, you know, there, maybe there's like a raid rework in there as well. Like, I don't know. It, it, it wouldn't be all on exactly season one. Season all one of the things of you it. mentioned are great. Okay. All of those things are very easy to do. You are can do they? it in one patch one three month patch could do that except season one season one is this gigantic money pit that is totally dungeon rework okay we're just gonna double the gold or, or, or we'll triple the gold 
Okay, now dungeons are fixed. No, they aren't though. That's they aren't easy. fixed. They're buggy as fuck. They're insanely janky. They're, like bright bars are stupid. Honestly, the, the code is so insane. broken in dungeons. They would be better off deleting it and going to the instances and putting a big rock in front of the instances so that you couldn't <laughs> access them anymore. That's better <laughs> than trying to go onto the hood and fixing the code and bringing the dungeons up to modern standards. <laughs> Just imagine if there's like a sign that you can interact with. It's like here lies dungeons. They were I mean, look at look at Guild, look at uh, Grothmore. There was a dungeon there in Guild Wars One, and now there's a bunch of fucking rubble blocking it. So that's how they solve well, that. So I mean, you, but this is the thing though. Like, do, why? Okay, so cut season one. All of everything else I said, and it basically shuts down output of the studio for four months. Are we okay now? No, not four months. Holy. You, you want to get a third of the year? You want their whole, like a whole key, a whole quarter. It just fixes. And, uh, they're just uh, releasing fixes. Like every month there's like a new terrible. patch and no. they're fixing stuff. I would, I, look, they, I will they, counter they could... that. I will counter that by saying, make it double the length of time, but also drip other content mixed in with it. And yeah. I'm okay with it. I, I think they could do like a dual roadmap. They could have like a season six roadmap. And then like right next to it running in parallel is like a, 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 pol a, a world polish roadmap where they like go, okay, this with this release of Living Story uh, will be the dungeon revamp. The next release oh, yeah. will be the, the fractal revamp. The next release will be like a new player experience revamp. And like that way, like you, it, it feels like nothing's being missed. Even, even if it, yeah. instead of being three months for a chapter, it's four months. It's but you're getting the perceptions. You're getting like way more. Okay, so yeah. you'd want to do it at the like, same oh, time. People are like, "Oh man, I'm getting content, but I'm also well, it depends getting on the Steam like releases. polish." Obviously, like they want to release the Steam release as fast as possible, but okay, like you said, so, it, it might be the case where they where they need to spend nine months like updating systems before they can do that. Let's do crunch and, time then. Okay, let, okay, let, then okay. Let, now we've kind of got um some common ground here. Now let's push that. So. Supposing that just isn't possible and that it's one or the other, what are we picking? New content. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and New content. Suppose. Okay. And then for Sneb's example here, like supposing that if they did both at the same time, it would make it like take not twice as long, but like four times as long. Is that still okay? So let's say they do a year where they're they're doing like a li a whole living world season. Because, wait, do, do okay, the Living World so season let's, last okay, a year? Okay, I don't here know. You go. So it's Living World Season 6. It's coming out, but you get two episodes a year because they're also working on fixes at the same time. So from, from, like, from like four episodes, you go like two, right? Or even less than that, right? Like, it, it's a year and a half for, um, for this. And instead of getting six episodes of season, you get two and then loads of fixes in between. Uh, I mean, no. Is that I, I better? Don't know. I, like, like, you it, cannot have. What would you? You cannot what, put yeah. a drought on new new content. And I I know your argument's gonna be, oh, but they they like revamp the season one and that becomes new content. It's not perceived that way. That's the problem. It, they like because anytime they're like, oh, we're going back to season one, it's not perceived as new content, even if they do a big revamp. So they have to be very careful with how they present that. So I would I would be against anything that puts a drought on new content in general, right? I would not want to ever go several months without. So if you're if you're saying that, you know, you only get these two living world seasons a year, mm -hmm. or or sorry, it's not seasons, episodes a year, and then in between they're doing all the stuff. That's still a drought well, in a sense to me. I I think that's just too risky for them to pull off. I wouldn't I wouldn't be willing to take that risk if I worked at ArenaNet. Well, and then there's the other point of that. It's like we keep saying, like, it's an investment and there's ROI. Well, okay, well, then invest. Hire more devs so that you don't have to make sacrifices so it's not either or. If you're, if you're, if, if you're going to couch it in that language yeah. that it's an investment, then actually invest. Double yes, the size of the studio. Well, what if they don't? If, be... you, if, <laughs> Jane, if, if they, you don't think. The thing is, if they do that. Well, though, is it, they, is they, it not going to be profitable? Well, I mean, it, I, I, I think it will be good, but I mean, do they? I don't know how that works. Do yeah, they have the ability well, to even do that? I mean, well, they would, they would like, run into they, an issue with with actually the not having enough talent yeah. that they could recruit. 
but because they'd have to split their current people who like know the systems and everything in half and then have them work on each thing and then they'd have to contract people because they wouldn't be guaranteeing a full-time thing and, and like they would also just simply be investing let's also not forget that they need to start development of the next expansion relatively soon after like eod is going to get like two rounds of polish maybe you know to like fix whatever broken metas there are and all of that but then they need to actually they need to start thinking about the next expansion like at the end you oh, know course, like yeah. so that there's not like a five-year drought and that is going to require an entire basically half the studio if if they don't rush it like this one you know if, if they do it the way they should like they did after hrt where they had like the live team and then the expansion team i think that that would be good but uh, but again, then then you need a third team for polish, like of old stuff. But but I don't know that it would necessarily take a full team of that of that size to do the polish. Like it might just be like you put like four ace devs on it. Let me flame the game. A... Let me flame the game. I think that honestly, polishing the game is harder than making new content. Right? I think yeah, it's that. Yeah, because you have to read up. spaghetti code I, I and make heads or noodly. tails of it. It's so noodly that no, it it's not like. It's not like, oh, you need like a third small team to do this. No, you'd need a, you'd need everyone doing this in my opinion to actually do it. Um, and I, I, I like, I, I wish, I wish Anet could like have the capital to invest in like another 200 devs, but that's not happening. There's, there's no way. Like, yeah, I, I'm, sh look, I'm confident. Well, um, if, if it's not worth doing, if it's not worth doing, it's not worth doing. Then, uh, if, you know, it, 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 I mean, when we say worth, right, we're, like the value to us is like the enjoyment and like obviously it has it has value to us right like it's worth it to us but we have to think from the business perspective is it worth it to them right and i there are some things where i think yes perhaps long term and then there are other things where i'm like i'm not sure it would get the roi that they want right like like the living worlds uh, like the season 1 stuff right i i don't know that it would get the roi that they want uh, but with with investing in something like fixing some simple systems, I can't imagine that the the systems would take forever to fix, right? I can't imagine that it's like a massive well, expense. Have, to be like, have oh, you? Right, we're changing okay, no, the no, 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 no. Okay, you know what, dude? No, I'm calling you guys out. I'm calling you out big. It's guys, it's getting spicy. It's about to get hot in here. Um, dude, have you guys seen Anet's dev history? Do you know how long? Do, like you know, do you know how long it takes these fuckers to do anything? <laughs> yeah i mean it's not news yeah that's what i mean so like this whole oh it's not that hard it won't take them that long motherfucker well like, alliance just, has got a relative, 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 relative statement right well i know it's a relative not statement. I, well it is a relative statement Fix, fixing dungeon rewards isn't is small in my opinion yeah. Well, it's a relative yeah, statement, but too. I think the thing is, you're making the statement to like, so I'm like, oh yeah, it's easy to fix these systems. Well, it obviously isn't, right? Like, this is obviously not the case. Like, Arena has uh, a lot of different things. Well, I think fractals could be fixed It very obviously easy. is easier than adding There's low-hanging like, fruit, and then thing. there's what, high effort. Like, I'm not sure if it is. There's a lot of low-hanging like, fruit. I think they've kind of wanted... Change a number from a two to a five teapot. <laughs> Well, that's that's a start, right? Well, the, like, the, come on. The thing is, though, it's it's not it's not as, it's not as simple as that. And like, regardless of what we think, for whatever reason, it takes Arena a very long time to fix systems. Maybe they aren't focusing on that, and I guess they probably aren't. I guess, but I still think we should not underestimate that there's a lot of overhead that's associated with development projects like this. It's a non-trivial thing to address some of these problems. I think uh, I do agree that yeah, sure, like. You know, I, th I think there are solutions that could be found, and it wouldn't be horrible, but there's a lot to fix. There is a lot of things that you would want to rework. And when you're completely reworking a system, you want to make you want to make absolutely sure that it's not going to be shit, right? You can't just say, oh, you know what? Fuck it. That'll do. Right? You don't want to rework it again. Whenever you rework a system, you're assuming it's the last ever rework, right? You're not going to like, oh, yeah, this is going to be good enough. We're going to rework it again in a year, though. No, no. Like, you want to make it like, yeah, this is the one. Like, this is the actual system we're going to use from now on. So I think you have to be super careful with stuff like this, uh, for sure. But yeah, I, I mean, look, 
The, the dungeon example I mean, is a really good one. Like, in my opinion, yeah, I agree that adding more gold would make them playable, but it wouldn't make them good. I think you'd have to get rid of all the junk items that drop and repurpose that. You'd want to add some kind of ascended source to that, too. And you probably wouldn't want to go too hard on liquid gold, because liquid gold is dangerous, right? You want to have, like, another specific set of, like, materials or whatever that would drop from this, right? You'd have to completely change you dungeons. Just, you just give them more tokens, and that is Isn't this where we talk those... about leaderboards? Yeah, well, yeah, well it, it's just... It, it's, it's really... I know, to me, I would just rather Arena did it well, you know? I want them to do, like, stuff like these, like, system reworks. I want them to completely pay the debt. Not, like, get a loan and fucking pay half of the debt. No, I want them to pay all the tech debt in one go. Um, and just say, right, it's done, right? And we can leave it alone and it's not gonna fuck up the game, right? Um, from now on. Uh, or, or as much as possible anyway, right? That's the goal. That's one positive thing you can say about Retail WoW is that they just basically essentially delete all their systems every every yeah. expansion so they don't have to worry about this yeah they don't have this tech that they're like yes. oh that 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 shit we released four years ago is doesn't buggy matter. wow yeah but yeah it doesn't matter this, it's irrelevant it's irrelevant this is like, you're absolutely right this is actually an issue the reason why i think this is a very special scenario and i think we kind of deserve a, to give arena a bit of special dispensation here is because i think guild war suit is actually unique in this regard um if like some shit's buggy in like burning crusade in retail who the fuck cares it's like totally irrelevant right it means nothing in guild wars 2 that isn't the case because content in the game is always relevant and it always will be as well it's never going away like these systems are permanent they will never be replaced they will only be built upon exclusively um as the game goes on so i think there is a very special dispensation that does deserve to be given to a read when when we're kind of having this conversation because it's not the same as other mmos if wow do something real dumb like a shitty system hello you know battle for azeroth and shadowlands who cares like they can eradicate that in the next x pack yeah sure they take a hit now and everyone hates them right well for more than one reason but you know um in wow x pack number a million right all of the stupid shit they did it's gone it doesn't exist anymore it literally doesn't exist um and i guess funny enough season one was like that am i right boys um but that isn't <laughs> the case right with almost everything else in the game like if a readnet makes a decision they have to live with it right um they have to live with that forever uh, and the, again, there are obviously upsides, right? It means that content in Guild Wars 2 is kind of timeless and ageless. But the downside is that, yeah, if they fuck up, they have to deal with that forever. Like adding all these currencies to these maps, yeah, they have to deal with that forever, right? If they fuck up dungeon rewards or dungeons are really scuffed, they have to deal with that forever. It's never going away. Um, but yeah, there you go. Dude, that was actually nearly an insane comeback. Holy shit, they ran out of time though. Unlucky. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. But yeah, does that make any sense? Yeah, for sure. That's why I think they should only fix the low-hanging fruit and just, I mean, live with it. Live with the stuff that they can't afford to fix. What, what if that's holding the game back, though? It's not. Well, it's obviously holding it's a 10 -year -old the game, game back. It's not going to hold it back. I think it is. Well, no, but it's, it's obviously holding it back in some regard. Like, dungeons like, I, being I what they think... are is not holding the game back. I mean, you can honestly, you could scratch the one right off the list. I mean, holding define holding it back. Like if dungeons had like some crazy robust leadership or leadership, like let's, uh, let's ranking say system on and... a daily basis, uh, you know, 300,000 people log into Guild Wars 2. How much bigger would that number be if dungeons didn't have bugs? 305,000? Like, my, oh, okay. Like, my I don't question, know. my question would be kind of, how does the first impression of a lot of these systems and how cohesive it feels and how polished it feels, how does that impact a new player? How does that impact new player attention? Because I'd say if you answer that question, then it's negative. Then I think you actually do have a pretty negative trend there. With a lot, I think a lot, I guarantee you that, well, I mean, this is true like for everything, right? I guess. But I think big fall off is going to be in Guild Wars 2, people playing the game at the beginning. If people make it to the end game, they'll probably stay, right? Because the end game is a lot more polished and a lot kind of, it's, it's better, right, than the early game. I think everyone would agree with that, right? But don't you want to, like, hit people, like, you know, like the old, like, one-two punch, right? You want to hit people really early, right? With, like, yeah, our game's amazing, fucking play it, right? And I think that, in a way, is kind of what Guild Wars 2 doesn't do a good job. I think it sells itself short a little bit. I do not think it delivers, it gives you a good impression of what to expect from the entirety of the game early on, you know? Can I ask, can I ask a question oh. to you, then? Kevin has been Hello. summoned. Uh, do, do I like... 
I joined like 45 minutes ago, but I couldn't get a word in. Yeah, it so, was getting intense. Go on then, yeah. You, yeah. You're Who out. asked? Who? Yeah, blah! Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, fuck you, Nai. No, um, my question then would be, how many people do you think level from 1 to 80, as opposed to buy an expansion, get a level boost, go to 80, immediately jump in the expansion? Because I think question. that could be... I, I think if End of Dragons had like fixed dungeons like it had new good dungeons it had a new good open world like a new good experience for new players to teach them some of the mechanics which it does because Shinyeya has one of the hearts that teaches you some basic mechanics like break bars and stuff like do you think that we should fix old content or make sure that the new content is kind of a jumping in point for players that also happens to teach them some of the new things Both. I think personally if I play with my friends, I'm going to be like, yeah, you know, I'm level 80, I got six level 80s. Let's just jump to level 80, I'll teach you the game, or the game will, you know, will try to teach you. Um, but I, let's jump in at level 80 so we can start the end game immediately, start playing immediately the game that we want to play instead of all the old shit. Because Season 1, I've played through all of Season 1. The only good spars of Season 1 is the Marionette and the Battle of Lions Arch. That is, like, gone. So okay. why focus on bringing all of that back when you can have an expansion be a fresh story? So my suggestion would also be that leave isn't happening. Tiny. Though. We know that isn't happening, for a fact. Yeah, but that's the that issue. isn't happening. That is, that is arena net being dumb because if you said you know we're gonna go to Kanta and you're gonna meet all these new characters and all the old characters, you know they're on the farm and they're being taken care of, you know, then that would be a good way to say to new players, okay, you can jump in at any time in the story because I don't think a lot of people replay season two, three, and four. So I think one would be a waste, because also you're going to monetize it, because they do that with every episode. So, um, I don't think a lot of people go back and buy the other episodes. So to me, this just says that we, um, what we should do is maybe just fundamentally change the way the game is structured. Because right now, when you play through the story, it will direct... There are two things, actually. Um, the first is that, you know, should we just restructure it then? Because basically, the game tells you to do this. Like, the game will actually... Di it will actively direct you through the story. That's basically the only only thing it does do right so if we're gonna like say fuck it we don't care about bringing it back let's just fundamentally change what the game tells you to do let's let's just say you know what boost boom get in there and go and yeah i agree like a new starting area would be the way to go but again that's not happening so it, it, that's not really on the well, cards right now but the second one is and area. this is something that i think has been really overlooked here uh, and maybe even by me by everyone free to play players Guys, free to play players. I bet you a shit ton of people try this game before they buy this game, right? And they don't have the opportunity to boost to 80, right? Like there's no 80 boost um, if you're a free to play player. And this means that the core game is relevant because if you want to convert someone from someone who's trying out the game, kind of like a little free trial, into someone who's actually going to purchase that game uh, for money and then uh, then then get the expansion and then get that level 80 boost. Well, realistically, you're going to need the core game to at least be a little bit compelling. And you do see a lot of free-to-play players. Just go, you know, if you just like go out in the open world, yeah, you will see people running around like leveling through the normal zones, right? You do see players who do not own the game playing and it's quite a lot of them as well. And I think that's not to be underestimated there as well. I guess the, the, the rebuttal I would give here is kind of a shit rebuttal, but I would say, okay, right, and look, you can meme me for this, it's a little bit um, circular in a way. I do not think ArenaNet want to just say, ah, fuck it, abandon that and move on. I think Anet, because they're Anet, they want to actually do everything really well. We know this, we, this is what they do, right? When they Whenever they make a system, it's gonna be like amazing, right? They've gotta polish it, it's gonna be good. I don't think they like, I don't think they like the idea of having any blemishes in the game, right? And I think that looking back at some of the new player, like free to play and core game experience, yeah, I think that they would probably view that as a bit of a blemish. Not bad, but certainly not fit for purpose and not up to their current standard for the content they develop. So I agree with you that yeah, I, I, I kind of like the idea of kind of encouraging people to say, oh, you know, don't worry about the old content. Go and play that whenever you want. Hop on board the fun train right now. Let's go. But I fundamentally think that is, or rather, I think that's fundamentally against ArenaNet's philosophy. And I think it's extremely unlikely they're going to change that. I, I, I don't even think that's even like one of the actions they would think about taking, to be honest. Well, I think they could, 
have it both. I think they could say like, okay, you can play the game from 1 to 80, but then also as a free-to-play player, you can have like an end game preview. And what that does is it allows you to play the first story mission of Ender Dragons and then the Shinyeya zone. I don't think that would, I don't think people would be pissed at that. People will pay for Ender Dragons. And I also think it would show people like, okay, this is what I got to look forward to. If Ender Dragons had a dungeon that was like super updated, I think that would be good, obviously. It's not going to have that. But I think if you made a preview for Endgame that shows like, okay, you get to play the first story mission of the new expansion. You get to play one of the zones. The zone has a dungeon in it. You also get to play the dungeon. And it's kind of like a beta character. So you don't keep anything. But it's just to show you like, okay, you got this to look forward to. That, that might take away the issue of players being like, oh, I gotta, you know, I gotta level from 1 to 80 to see what the end game is like, and then I'll decide if I buy it. You well, give these people a preview of what they get to play once they buy the expansion by giving them one zone, one dungeon, one story mission to kind of introduce the expansion. What's the difference between that? Would be a good middle that way. It's all a wish list, yeah. I mean, they don't have the stomach to do that. Yeah, I mean, that. what's the difference in that and just like fixing the content, though, right? Like, if you're gonna make like new shit and just kind of give that, just like. Oh, no. this... I think fixing the content will take a longer time, and I don't think it will pay off in the way that people want it to. Okay. Because... Uh, well, you know, you know. What? Let me just ask a hypothetical here, then. Okay. So imagine. Okay. Would it be better? Would it be better if the? Okay. So the thing is, I think we all agree that it would be better if these things were fixed, right? Like all these issues that we're discussing here. If they were fixed, the game would be better. But we're we're yeah. arguing over is it worth it or not? And I think the really important thing is what what do we mean by worth it? Because when I say worth it, I mean better for the long-term health of the game, right? And I think that fixing all this stuff is going to, uh, in the long-term, pay off massively. I think it will generate a return on investment. I, I think there's no doubt about that. Um, that if you have a much better cohesive new player experience, systems are way less scuffed and less confusing, that's obviously going to lead to better player retention. And particularly when you're bringing in like a massive injection of new players with Steam, I think it, it does make sense to go in with this, this approach. Um, so I, I guess the thing is, is like, at what, what, at what point I, I think would certain it be worth things it? make, make really good, like revamping fractals because as far as we know, fractals are being actively developed. That's probably a very good thing to invest in revamping dun revamping dungeons and like touching that old code. Like, I, I don't see that that having a very good return on investment. Cause that's a massive project that's well, unlikely to bear a, a ton of fruit i'll be honest and you'll piss off a lot of players who like dungeons the way oh, they like are, the seven people left seen. over right yeah which yeah. they ain't which were strong enough to make a cave on a on a on a change that they made so they care about those seven people well i, I guess the problem i have with this is that doesn't this just kind of kick the can down the road to an extent? Like, we're, we're just going to, like, ignore this really big problem with the game, essentially? I just don't think that's a very it, good idea. It is, but the issue is, me, personally, as someone who plays Guild Wars 2 as his main game, if they said, like, oh, we're going to spend four months going back to this, I'll be like, yeah, well, maybe I'll see you in four months, maybe not. Like, I want active content being developed that's new. As someone who's gone through Season 1, Season 2, everything, I want new content, and if they don't deliver on that, okay. Let, let, let me, me hit you. Let me hit you with the juice. I'm hitting you with the juice. What would you like better? Like better health for the game long term, or new content now? As someone who is very self-centered when it comes to gaming, I would want more content. And I think there are just a lot of people who are like me, who are just like not looking at the long-term health of the game. They're just like, you know, I want to kill an elder dragon and then okay. uh, you know well, would you would you would you agree that better long-term health for the game would ultimately be the self-centered play from your perspective though because if the game is healthier then you know the game's going to get more content well, and potentially grow yes but i think a lot of people aren't willing to wait for the long term and they just kind of want to take pieces as they come okay. uh, why, why are these things mutually exclusive yeah that, that, that's another I, thing i don't get that it. i was gonna i was gonna say is like it's not like oh we choose to fix all these systems and we retain X player number, or we choose to develop new content and, and, and nothing. Like, obviously, both things grow the game. If, if they're actively pumping out new high-quality content, that also grows the game. So the question is, and, and, they, and they have limited dev resources, so they only have, say, $7 million a year to spend on 
live development mm-hmm. uh, of non XPAC development. So it, it's not like, like even if revamping the old content was worth doing in that every dollar you invest would give you a dollar 50 more in the long run, how, how I would assume that building new content would also be a positive ROI. Otherwise, ain't it would just have gone out of business well, before. I, I so. mean, it definitely will be. But I would just say that I think it, if um, if there weren't these roadblocks for players in seeing this new content, then I think the game would you know would it would be a better ROI, right? Is guess what I'm getting at here. Um, they're not mutual exclusive. I think both work. Obviously, they. I mean, they obviously do, right? Because you know, Guild Wars 2 still exists. But I guess I'm saying that. Um, I think that new content is great and all, but if players don't make it there because, uh, you know, like the, the new player experience and the systems are so weird, then it's not going to happen. I think this actually really applies to the end game as well that we particularly enjoy. I think that, you, you know what, I, I, you know what, dude? It is hot take time, so let's fucking do it. Um, I do think that in a way, there will always be problems with uh, Arena making new like end game content if the induction into these systems is always poor. Right, um, and if the new player experience isn't good, then ultimately the end game in Guild Wars 2 is always going to suffer from ha- struggling to generate new players, and they'll all end up stuck disproportionately in open world um, because of these things. So, if we, I, I do think that it is almost necessary to fix some of these problems and address these systems in order for the end game to actually thrive. Because as of right now, players just get stuck and they don't make it there. And a lot of people fall off. So you can add all the fancy new content you want, but I don't think that actually gets us the result that we want. I mean, and and honestly, there I can look- I don't think revamping dungeons gets us the result that we want either. Like, I don't think that that, and I don't think revamping season one gets us I think. I mean, those things, maybe not. Right, um, they they might not be like super relevant, but I do think that everything everything that improves player retention generates more um, veteran players, and therefore generates players that are in the end game a little bit more. So ultimately, I think they do. Maybe not. It's not like the optimal thing. That's not the main reason, right? You don't make you don't revamp season one, right, for the sole purpose of like making people get into raids. No, like you you do that so people don't. You you do that to eliminate a point where players fall off, right? And if those players then move forwards, then they have a higher chance of getting into these game modes, right? And so on. And every one of those things, yeah, sure. Are they directly targeted at fixing the end game? No, they're directly targeted at making sure that players stay in the game for longer. And the longer they stay around, and the better, the the longer they stay around, the more likely they are to engage with these telegraphs that you would also fix, right? Making end game better, making the achievement diary better, uh, making guilds better, social features better. Like the longer they stay in the game, the more likely they're to engage with that. And therefore the expansion content, the new content, and just everything overall, right? So- Yeah, yeah. I I, I don't know. I I just feel like the, like stuff like fractals is 100% something that Mm -hmm. they should, fix like that's relative like the systems are still modern that they're working with or, or at least medium age so they're still workable so i i feel like that's maybe not the lowest hanging fruit but it's it's definitely low hanging fruit compared to like dungeons mm-hmm. for per se and since fractals are being actively developed it makes sense to do that there's a lot of things that have been talked about that i don't think have any relevance anymore like like dungeons are frankly just not relevant to a new player's experience anyway should they be yeah i mean i would love that but i don't think it's Mm -hmm. a high value proposition so i i I just like i feel like that would just be a waste of of effort Mm -hmm. like rather than revamping dungeons just do fractals twice as fast like fixed fractals that much faster okay like that would be like I, I think what Init does is they take a they make a list of all the broken systems or things that they say are like tragically flawed systems, and they go and they can put like they can put like how many man how many dev hours next to it each one takes you know, and then they can have a real hard look at like v- like the value of of actually fixing that. You know, and and th- then I think they make the decision on on which things they fix because it could be that let's let's say they only fix thirty three percent of the systems that they identified are as broken, but that solves seventy five percent of the problem. Then I think there's a really good value proposition there, right? Mm-hmm. Like, 
they're they're only, they're doing a third of the work, but getting the lion's share of the benefit from just that third of the work. And yeah, they're leaving two thirds of the work undone, but that was like the minor two thirds that don't actually affect player retention that significantly. And I think that's what they'll what what they'll end up doing is the systems that are valuable will get fixed, and the, the systems that are not valuable will die on the vine. And and that's because that's the way that's been going, and it's probably the economics haven't changed. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think that is the core discussion. I think, you know, we've, we've kind of exhausted this, uh, this topic. So I think we'll probably wrap it up here actually, because I think the, the big disagreement here that, well, I think it's impossible to resolve because none of us have number numbers really is where do we draw the line on what is important to the cohesion of the game? Um, so I think, we have expressed our views correctly. I think we've debated hard, but I think that is probably as far as it can really go, actually. So, honestly, you guys let us know what you think. I want to know what you guys think. You tell us. Tell us now. Let's go. Give Post us the information. Post your responses on the official forum. Yeah. And, uh, I, and, uh, I actually want to give because uh, you know uh, we've been we've been yelling. Please for a while. flame out Nike on the phone. I want yeah. I want to give yeah. Sneb the final word here. Actually, then we'll. Round this oh, discussion. Oh, that, is that your final word? The dog? Okay. The dog. The yeah, he's mad. Shut yeah. your wife up. Okay. Oh, whoa. Okay. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> my man, Nike. My man. That's a little. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, let's quickly just wrap this up. Is a snub. Final word. Final thoughts on the topic. And then I'm out of here. I'm gonna yell at this automated tournament. Okay. Boom. That's how it is. Final thoughts. Basically, I don't know if it's I don't know if it's worth it. Like uh, I've said it a million times. Like it's it's about the numbers and the ROI and the data. We don't have that, so I don't really know what to say other than I don't personally think bringing back something like season one would be the best ROI for them. Okay, there you go. Well, I probably will upload this to YouTube. So YouTube. Write your comments. Do it. Come and discuss it in my Discord as well, guys. That's right. My Discord is... I'm going to quarantine all of the Guild Wars 2 debates to my Discord. Get in there right now and listen to all that stuff, guys. Enjoy. Enjoy the memes. Enjoy the content. Enjoy the gaming. We love to see it, guys. Get in there. But yeah, that's it. Thanks for hopping on board, guys, and letting me leech you because, um, you know, my uh, bot content fell through. Don't worry about that. That is coming very shortly, guys, actually. A little bit of a teaser for all of you guys here all the way at the end, uh, by the way. Uh, there will be a conversation with a bot overlord, in fact, talking about some of the recent things that happened uh, with the big bot zone over there. So stay tuned for that there as well. But that's it. Yeah, we just need to leak. We need to get Anet to leak every single one of their metrics, and then we can make the decision for them. That sounds about right, I think. But yeah, it's good stuff. But yeah, that's it. Cheers, boys. I appreciate you.